Welcome everyone back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield for the European Para Table Tennis Championships. We're on day three. My name's Yuri and I'm joined by Matea once again. We've been commentating for the last three days. Lovely to see you again, Matea. And we're back into the crunch stages of these competitions now. And uh, Schmidtberger versus Chirich. You know, you know a little bit about Schmidtberger. Uh, yes, I've seen him play uh, many times before. Uh, as have many of the other players, he's uh, been around uh, ever since 2007 internationally. Heavily decorated um, player. Also the current reigning world and European champion. Three times silver medalist in singles from the Paralympic game at Games and the World Championships. Wow. Uh, so all of that speaks clearly in his favor, but um, he'll be satisfied with nothing uh, other than gold and that direct ticket to Paris, I believe, at this tournament. Still first to go, the quarterfinals, so to speak, a medal match. Uh, whoever wins will be facing the winner of uh, Colin Judge and Vasil Petruniev. The, the other yeah. quarterfinal taking place on table two right now. And already secured themselves a bronze medal at least at this competition since we don't uh, do third place playoffs here in para table tennis so an important match for both of them really in, indeed and we we saw uh mladen Ciric, the serbian uh, this morning had a really confident game and uh, and we're up and started First points to Schmidtberger. Ooh, great from behind his back there. Oh, wonderful rallies from the very start. Um, that hasn't been the case throughout the day today. Uh, all the other players tip top in a little bit around uh, the start of such an important match, uh, but not these two. No, going at it. And, and in fact, um, Chiric played like that this morning. He took went for every shot and it was landing yeah he had to play the round of 16 Ciric against Direla from Romania 3-0 clear win uh, but that was due to his uh, loss in the group stages against another German Tom Brüchle I'm sure he knows that uh, nothing but his best from the very start till the end uh, will even give him a chance against somebody like Thomas Schmidberger world number two well, he's started well. He's, Chirich is up 3-2, but he's, uh, he's just gone to 4-2. So a good start from Chirich. And a quick correction and apology from my side here. Uh, Tom Schmidberger, world number one, of course. World number one. Well, you don't want to uh, miss out on the medals, so an important game to win 3-4 Chirich has started well wow that was just some shot speed of that cross court now they only played uh, against each other two times before but the last one was this year at Slovenia para table tennis open clear win for Schmidberger that time 3-0 looking to repeat that I'm sure here as well well, it was clear sir, say, sailing for him in uh, his group stage as well. Two three zeros against Maxine from Romania and Rodriguez of Spain. These are great rallies. I mean, <laughs> just superb rallies. Although Schmidtberger is coming out on top at the moment. He's 6-4 up, but Chiric is... Oof. Well, that was uh, brilliantly <laughs> shortened and uh, wide into the corner uh, by Ciric, but Tom Schmidberger, excellent reach, uh, great mobility around the table, and he had enough time to get at that one. He's certainly... Uh, the kind of game we're usually more used to in classes four and five, or we're looking forward to it, but didn't get it this morning. This is uh, another level, without doubt, from Schmidtberger. Chiric hanging in there, though, 7-5 with serve. 
picks up another point, 7-6. I suppose Chiric has to just play aggressively. He has to go for the win rather than try to defend his way out of this. Yeah, I, Tom Schmidberger is too good. If you don't uh, put pressure on him, uh, he's not going to let go. And again, Schmidtberger. We're not happy with his forehand here. Mm. The coach, Hannes Dusseler, just telling him not to get too frustrated over it. Do it right next time, like this. <laughs> That's a beautiful shot. You can see from behind. Yeah, wonderful down, down the, line. the line. And another. Yeah. Tremendous. Tremendous to watch. Quickly up for four points and uh, four game points. Yeah, so what fast these two are playing that uh, it only took them four minutes, even with these long rallies, for Schmidberger to secure his first game here. Chiric though is uh, you know he seems to be able to live with the rallies up until a point and then there's these wonderful cross court hits from Schmidtberger yeah he'll have to um, do better than this but it's difficult against uh, a player of this quality like we've seen here it can be over pretty fast a few replays here of these rallies helps that they've slowed them down a little bit <laughs> <laughs> the timing looks amazing from Schmidtberger yeah. yeah look at that great to see it in the replays and Schmidtberger has probably been king of his group for five to eight years it looks like yeah quite a while now uh, like I've mentioned uh, silver medalist from um, world and Paralympic championships a gold medalist from the Europeans not just in singles but in team events uh, when that was still a discipline uh, so he's he's no uh, stranger to this magnitude of competition to the stress to this uh, level of play Chiric just couldn't quite get that back over the net, but one apiece at the moment in this second set. And Chiric showing some skills of his own. Yeah, he wasn't quite ready to get uh, that ball back, Schmidberger. Oof. Yep. Was was going for a clear winner uh, in the previous one already, but this one was just so good with that backhand cross court into the corner long. I suppose with his service, he has to either go long or be very short. Otherwise, anything mid-table. Yeah, that's always the case. Of course, you're trying to serve either really long and wide or the elbow or area or really, really short, just to make sure the opponent can't attack directly well Chiric is uh, putting up a great fight he leads 4-2 and that was a wonderful shot cross court from Chiric um, goes yeah Schmidberger top spin wasn't bad it was good but uh, slow enough uh, to just bring him out of balance and for Chiric just to basically use his spin and energy uh, back in the block Chiric fails to get down the line, get, clips the top of the net, goes out, but he still is in the lead, 4-3. Ah, Schmidtberger is human. A, a bit, a bit uh, loose with his strokes right now, I feel. I have to put more aggression and energy into it. Chiric, 5-3 up. Whoa, yeah. what a Another return. one like that. Such a long swing by Schmidberger that uh, he basically uh, puts himself into trouble when he gets the block back. Misses the table there and uh, 
Well, there's serious daylight here for yeah. Chirich. 7-3. Starting three. to get a little bit frustrated. Just clips the top of the net. Point to the German. 7-4. A very good resistance and nice pressure Chirich is putting on Schmidberger here. He doesn't seem to uh, be caving in, seem remaining calm, and it seems Schmidberger seems more agitated than uh, than Chirich. And that was a a welcoming kind of lock yeah, shot. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I think Schmidberger recognises he didn't deserve that point. Still, I'm sure he'll take it. And Chiric really shouldn't afford making those kind of mistakes. Well, it's 9-5 Chiric and it'd be something he really needs to try and win this set. Into the net. And uh, Schmidberger down by three now. Yeah, a little bit of luck, but it uh, looks like he got his block with the forehand back as well. 7-9. Schmidtberger to serve. Down by two. And that's a forcing Chirich into the uh, Yeah, he was trying shot. to take the shot with the backhand side quite far on the forehand. And just like that, it's all level again. Nine all. And Chiric having led by four points. Has just missed the corner of the table and now he's 10-9 down. Yeah, and he's put himself into a lot of trouble here quite unnecessarily, really. And it all happened after that uh, missed cleared shot. And yeah, Schmidberger. That's the backhand that finishes off this game. I suppose the word here is you have to be clinical. When he was up 9-4, just needed to be clinical. Yeah, just another proof that uh, at this stage you can't afford to make one mistake too many, not let down for a second, let alone a minute uh, in a fast game like this one. It's enough and instead of leveling up, it's now 2-0 for Schmidberger. He's got his confidence back, his uh, momentum and a really, really hard task now for Chirich to even stay in the match, I would think. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, would, you, would you have called a timeout at 9-5 or 9-6 and just said to Chirich, just Yeah, it is down. a consideration. Uh, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea, yes. Uh, especially, well, it's easy to say now when, when we've seen how everything went. Uh, but yeah, you, you need to win a game when you're so much in the lead. And now he might not even get a chance again. No, that's true. So 11-6, 11-9. Chirich certainly improved and Schmidtberger had to uh, bring his A game out in the last few points of that second set. But Chirich isn't. Chirich can live with him, but he's really got to be much more clinical. Chirich serves. Gets the help of the net to get mm. his first point. Yeah, but did a good uh, job uh, pressuring with the inverted rubber. Super shot from Schmidtberger. Uh, right on the racket, as we say. <laughs> just it seemed to serve was just a bit too mid-table-ish, wasn't it? Exactly. Oh, long from Schmidtberger. It's not, it's not at his best, and Chirich just needs to keep piling the pressure on Schmidtberger. Hit him right into the sore spot <laughs> there. <laughs> Two apiece. It's a high energy game though. It's, it's it's not boring. Longer rally for once. Oh not at all. Chirich really likes to play that backhand side with the inverted rubbers far into the forehand side of the table. 
but uh, left himself open on his actual backhand side. Schmidberger immediately took advantage of that. Chirich takes the point as Schmidberger went long, but that was a lovely little soft shot over the net there. Yeah, just using that non-energy coming off the inverted backhand side table uh, racket. Schmidberger attacking that uh, backhand side. Peppered Chirich takes the lead 4-3. Waits for the ball to come back that they've chosen. There it is. They're quite, quite fussy about the ball, aren't they? They want to. Yeah, it is what we work with in table tennis. Yes. Nice Cheers. rally, soft shots by Schmidberger, just bringing everything back. Six-three, the lead for Schmidberger. Oh, uh, nicely he's played. He's really trying to build up on that but this is uh, the gesture in says yeah not there I know what happens always makes me smile when they turn around to the coach and look at the coach I mean the coach can't really do much when you're playing those shots uh, you're uh, mostly really just talking to yourself in those <laughs> moments I find yeah <laughs> Whether it's the racket or the coach or the air, <laughs> doesn't really matter. Like Schmidberger now, that's the way to do it. Chirich takes a breather. He's 8-4 down. Finding it difficult to live with Schmidberger. He's certainly trying. Tried Fails. to go for that uh, money shot, but just over the table, and this really seems to be nearing an end here now. Oh, Schmidtberger had almost too long to think about that shot and then hit it into the net. Yeah, a little bit too <laughs> less spin against the inverted rubber of Chirich's backhand, but well shortened here. Schmidberger takes the lead, 10-5. And that's five match ball for Schmidberger. Ah, got a little bit greedy on this one. He could hardly reach it and uh, didn't have enough uh, energy and control left for the top spin shot. And Doesn't Chirich. need another one though. No, no. Chirich screws up his face and realizes just went that little bit too long. Fast over, just uh, like in both of their previous encounters. 3-0 clear for Schmidberger now, even though it didn't look like that uh, for a minute in the second game. But still, Thomas Schmidberger continues his hunt for the next gold. Um, He'll be waiting for his opponent in the semi-finals. The other quarter-final still going on, but already going home with a medal, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, well done, Thomas Schmidtberger and um, Mladen Ciric from Serbia. Just outgunned by a truly classic, class athlete. And uh, we'll be back with you shortly for our next game. And we have about a 20-minute break.
first property work. On table 8, men's symbols class 8, Clement Berthier from France and Billy Shelton from Great Britain. On fire is Paul Nichols from England. On table 9, men's symbols class 8, Thomas Bouvet from France, Piotr Grudzian from Poland, on fire Harry Juggle from England. On table 10, men's singles class 7 quarter final, Ben Ashok Despinot from Belgium, Bjorn Schneck from Germany, on fire Vatla Gromenka from Czechia, assisted by Jay Koi Shang Song from USA. Table 11, men's singles class 7 quarter final, Theo Bishop from Great Britain, and John Paul Montanus from Netherlands. The umpire, Jacqueline Williams from Wales, assisted by Eric Bergesetter from Norway. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield for the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships. My name's Yuri and I'm joined by Matea. We're um, getting ready for Super versus Suchanek and uh, it's going to be a super game perhaps. Matea? Uh, yeah, judging by their last encounter at Costa Brava International this year. Uh, we're in for an exciting match and uh, definitely uh, both of them eager to fight it. It's the quarterfinals, so um, literally a medal match. The winner of this will have secured themselves a medal already. Um, so high stakes and uh, two high-ranked players as well. Chuper world number one, still the favorite here in this match as well, having won 13 out of 16 of their encounters and also silver medalists from the last World Championships, Paralympic Games, European Championships many times over. Wow. So far the French Fabien Lamirou seems to be his only nemesis but no doubt uh, Yuji Suchanek here will be looking to uh, add himself to that list. 
Well, Mateo's uh, vocabulary is getting even better. Nemesis, I love that word. So, um, but 2-1, early lead here for Suchanek. And he goes 3-1 against Schuper. Is it Schuper or Schuper? I'm not an expert okay. on the Polish <laughs> language. There's the lob, and it works. It was almost a reverse lob, was that? Um, nicely, skillfully done. You're always looking to put a lot of backspin into uh, that shot, making sure it bounces back into your direction rather than towards the opponent. And in the blink of an eye, Schuper opens up a 5-3 lead, having trailed 3-1. And that's how quickly it can go. Yeah, both of them had strong performances in their uh, qualifying or round robin groups. 3 0 and 3 0 for Chuper against Michaud of France and Toledo from Spain. 3 1 against Rueb for Suchanek in his first match. Better against Gaic of Slovenia, unfortunately for me, with 3 0. <laughs> And uh, a fast uh, match wow. in the round of 16 this morning, as well against Lovash of Slovakia. Well, Suchinek, you know, playing a nice one down the line, but he's 8-4 uh, down. Schuper catching him out with a couple of great lobs. Oh, it gets the edge of the table there, and suddenly 9-4 in the blink of an eye. Yeah, that lob is the signature shot in uh, classes one er and two, and you surely uh, expect Chuper to be a master of it. Um, although Suchanek, uh, very known for using it. So, 9-5. Good rally developing here. There's the lob. And <laughs> beautifully, beautifully executed. 10 5. Get much closer than that, and so fast we're already All over done. with the first game. Wow, just warming up we were. <laughs> That's the commentary team, but um, Schuper 11 5, and some incredible lobs that he plays just over the net, and uh, clearly he's very skillful. Yeah, hardly got a chance to breathe, think about uh, what to do, Suchanek here. I mean, those lobs are uh, unplayable in this level when they're done, executed well. So, and there's another one as He's an example. He's got a couple of uh, competitions on this level under his belt as well, the check, so um, no doubt. Uh, he'll find, or at least attempt to find an answer to this. Yeah, you have the opportunity and privilege to see these guys warming up and training in the in the other big hall here, where the tables are matched identically. The conditions of the compet of the, of the competition tables, and and I know the athletes are really enjoying that opportunity. Um, but it's great to see them warming up. Yeah, the competition lights and of course the pressure of uh, possibly winning a medal or having to leave the competition uh, are a different story. That's something that you can't really train for in the hall. No. It's just the experience of having that. That's right, you can't actually replace the moment of being there in the game feeling the pressure and looking down the barrel of the gun Schuper, oh comes unstuck for the first time great and lob um, bit too long and uh, right away the check on the ball good accurate smash timing very important in these kind of situations because once 
you throw your body uh, into the shot, there's no recovery and no way to repair the error, possibly. So they replace the ball. Yeah, and that's why a quick uh, warm-up, testing it out, just to make sure it's round. <laughs> I hope so. Long from Suchinek. And just for, for me, because I'm a layman to this game, what does Tibhar mean? Uh, that's the name of uh, the company that uh, produces clothes, uh, rackets. Got you. So we see them on the back of the Poles and the Dutch. So uh, I've given them a mention. So um, an equipment uh, manufacturer. Basically. And there are other manu manufacturing equipment manufacturers. And we have them here on display. Three apiece, the score at the moment. And uh, we have a handheld camera courtside. This medal deciding game really fast exchanges and long rallies uh, for this class I find and Suchinek takes a lead 4-3 there's that lob short 5-3 to the check. Yeah, better in the second game now. Suchanek um, putting pressure on Cooper, forcing him into mistakes. Oof. Another good lob. So quickly picked up yeah. off the bounce. Great finesse. Amazing placement. And again, wow. two times in a row. Suchinek, he sets him up. Yeah, he, Suchinek is going backwards and then in comes the lob. Yet no. again the lob. Yeah, it's just uh, as if uh, Chuper here is trying to teach Suchinek a lesson of where not to place his shot. That's frustrating. Three in a row there with the, with the lob. Six all. He's his advantage is already gone. It'll be in his mind now, that lob. Yeah, such hard uh, worked advantage and then you lose it so quickly. And now even trailing behind. Four straight points. Five straight points to the pole. I'm going to stop mentioning people having an advantage because it's the kiss of death. It's uh, the next thing is is they're behind. So Schuper leads eight seven. He didn't quite make that point work for him. There he goes back to the. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh ho, ho, ho. yeah. He saw that his lob wasn't short enough, so he was just prepared there. It looked as if. Sushanek just hit him in the bat with that. But Super misses, goes long, so it's 9-8. So this game much tighter. Oh well well adjusted. You'd say lucky for Sushanek, but such a great reaction from Super. 10-8 the score now. Two set points. And Why uh, does he do, <laughs> do it? I would uh, wow. would be my question here. It was like four or five serves into that area to Chuper, and he got uh, he got a taste for it. Yeah, it seemed strange. He playing to his strengths and 
Well, he's two sets down now, and that's probably going to be just too big a mountain to climb. It's certainly something different uh, to be done by Sushanik if he wants to stay in this match. That was We're one of just the 11 minutes uh, into, into this match and already... Well, we've just seen the two lobs that didn't work and Suchanek got points off on the replay there. But 11-5, uh, 11-8, Suchanek's getting a bit closer, but he's two sets down and I think that's uh, a really big mountain to climb. Though we have seen people come back from two sets down. In, at this stage of the competition. Well, of course, it's it's not over until it's really over. Nobody's given up here, but it doesn't look good for the Czech at the moment. Interestingly, uh, Schuper doesn't have any strapping on his back. It's all an individual preference. Uh, depends on your ability to grip the racket. Of course, any strapping limits the movement, so it's always about uh, finding that combination that works best for each player. Same goes for the wheelchair, the bats, the rubbers, and so on. Suchinek to serve. Ooh, straight into the net. That's not going to. That's not how he wanted to open up. Yeah, he must be frustrated with his serves from the previous game, where he got so many of those lob returns. He's quickly gone two and zero, oh, losing points on his serve, but a good comeback there. Down the line. Great play from Suchanek. Yeah, interesting turn of events. Both players losing points when serving. Ah, just a bit forced with that lob. The ball did touch the net and that can change the velocity, the, the rotation. Three apiece, such a neck making bad errors that you can ill afford to make as he needs to get his points every time he can and that's a nice cross-court play from Schuper. Yeah, good recovery, always a risk with uh, trying to play uh, wide out. If the opponent gets it, you can get it even wider yourself back. Well, Suchinek was successful with the lob there, and it's four points each. There's the lob again. Oof, but just short. Point to Suchinek. 5-4, he leads. There's his lob, and well executed, Schuper. Yeah, well on the ball. All square again, five apiece. Suchinek staying in the game. Can he continue to stay in the game? There's another Not great lob. like that. Amazing You're bound to, watch. to miss some of those shots, of course, but when you lose one and win five, that's still a score to take advantage of. And at the break of this game is Trooper again building up that advantage. Without doing anything particularly spectacular. But uh, Shushinek gets a good lob this time. And 7-6 uh, he trails with serve. At some stage he needs to get ahead in this set. He's got a point. Yeah, 
good, um, good with the serve, short enough to bring Chupar out of balance. Into the net from Suchanek, he had the benefit of the net cord there, but didn't capitalise. And on this occasion... Yeah, these are... Looks like an easy return for Schuper, but these are actually really difficult to, to get right when sitting in a wheelchair. Timing so crucial. So well done to him. And timeout at the moment. Sushinek needs to reflect. He's 2 0 down, 9 7 down. He has to find a way back. Yeah, well called for. Um, it is the last opportunity really to extend his time in this match. Just two points away for Trooper on the other side. To yeah, finish I this off rather quickly, actually. Yeah, he will do, he will do. Um, quietly gone about his business, Schuper hasn't been spectacular but uh, certainly using that lob to great effect against the Czech the winner of Daniel Rodriguez and Alexander Ježik taking the match taking place on the court next to ours will be awaiting the winner of ours in the semi-finals Schuper relinquishes a point there a bit of indecision in this shot, enough to take the ball over the table. Great rally, and just as soon as I said that, Super goes long. Yeah, Sorry. first error Suchanek. really here for Suchanek. So, match point. Several of them. Oh, yeah, first one just off the edge. So kind of needing all the luck he can get right now. And, <laughs> and again, he gets it. Wow. <laughs> Clips the end. Well, we'll say that that was consistent. Two out of two. All square, ten De apiece. Deuce now. So we'll be changing the serve after each point. Two point advantage needed to win. And Suchinek um, has a taken. A bit of an impatient, maybe poor decision making for Chufer here. Could cost him this game. Not yet though. Suchinek into the net. Eleven, eleven apiece, eleven all. Ooh, looked a little bit lazy. Yeah, the pole now with a chance to serve for the win. There's the lob, and killed. There it is. Goes for the kill and gets it. Clear three zero and um, unexpectedly short or quick match, I would say. Schuper yep. continues his hunt for maybe the goal this time or a direct ticket to Paris next year. We'll be going home with at least a bronze medal, though. And Suchinek won't, misses out, but a clear win for the man from Poland, Schuper, outplaying the Czech. And uh, three sets, 13-11 in the last set and uh, we'll be joining you for more table tennis in about 20 minutes or so.
Welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield uh, for this matchup between the Brits, Robert Davis and Federico Falco, his opposition, the Italian. And uh, my name is Yuri, I'm joined by Matteo. We're back again. And uh, the players just warming up. Yeah, we're back actually with the first semi-finals of this competition, men's singles class one. So and we will get the first finalist uh, in this European Paratable Tennis Championships 2023 taking place here at the EIS Sheffield, the wonderful arena hosting us this week. Two days of round robins behind us. The knockout stages taking place today, mostly rounds of 16 quarterfinals, but this two already have battled through those stages, already secured themselves a medal, very important, but now looking to get into a position for a possible gold and uh, that most important direct ticket to Paris 2024. And that sets the scene well for these two. And uh, any ideas of perhaps who's the stronger of the two, Matea? Well, you, you can never uh, bet against the four-time consecutive reign in European champion Rob Davis. Uh, nobody else here is in a position like him to actually seek for a fifth consecutive European's title. Uh, however, he was uh, out with injuries for a couple of years now, uh, to be exact. So the last encounter between the two was a tight one, 3-2. Uh, Rob Davis won at Lignano Masters earlier this year. So we cannot count Federico Falco out completely. He had a very good run in the quarterfinals against Urlabor from Hungary, 3-0. And he's the bronze medalist in singles from the European Championships in 2017. Coming off here from the Polish Para Open, where he took gold in singles. Certainly looking to improve that uh, record of 12 to 1 that speaks in Rob Davis's favor. Wow, that's a, a thorough, thorough background to the history between these two players who, whilst they have a bronze each, they now square up to each other. They want to get to a final. Yeah, it takes some of the pressure off having already medaled, of course, but that just means uh, that hopefully both of them will be willing to risk it more uh, to secure their space in the final. And... Uh, Davis opens up with a beautiful return lob immediately off the serve. And there, the lob attempted the second time. That one didn't work. Yeah, that signature tetra shot, as we call it, in men's singles class one. An expected try, still finding his angles. It looks like Rob Davis. Takes his time. Gets the serve in. Very aggressive from Davis. Yeah, very good. Uh, finally, slightly longer rally and two uh, nice down the line shots for Davis. Davis unable to return on that occasion. Yeah, very far out uh, into the corner. No question about it being a let. It did cross the end line of Davis's side of the table correctly. Falcao with a 3-2 advantage. Davis kills that one. Levels it up, 3-all. Bit deep there, the lob. It 
ran a big lo bit long, but it's still not an easy shot to make. Wow, oh. what a return. <laughs> Amazing. And that gives Davis the lead, 4-3, and it's a noisy crowd here at the Institute of Sport supporting the Brit. That's a great lob from Falco. Too good, too far away for Davis. But this is why these shots are so popular in classes one and two. For all. Nothing between these two, and uh, Davis goes long. Looks he a looks bit. at the coach, a bit agitated for not making this right. Looks like he's trying to be the more aggressive here. Yeah, to establish himself on his opponent. And uh, Falco takes an early lead, 6-4. Davis, something called there. Some question about the legitimacy of this serve. Maybe he was warned about the toss. So as if the if the toss isn't high enough, it get, gets the service in quicker. Uh, executed well there, Davis got to the lob. Uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the things, and of course the opponent can't see as well what you've done with it. So it's not allowed to hide the ball with your palm when serving. It has to be tossed high enough and straight up. A um, little bit different in these classes, like you'll see, of course, uh, Davis is serving off the racket because he's not able to use his non-playing arm to do that. All those kinds of allowments uh, established in the classification cards. A couple of unforced errors here from Davis. He's finding himself trailing. Falco just get that one over the net. 7-6. Very equal battle so far. That one was called out by Davis. It's a close call. Usually the players know best. Yes, and uh, that decision was upheld. Falk takes his time, serves against the net. 7-0. Davis with the serve gets the let call there and serve again Great Britain looking to uh, grow their medal tally Oof. <laughs> well, was that in? Was yeah, that, that in? That was right on the edge, if I saw that correctly. Seems the point has gone to Davis, so it might have been on the edge on the Italian side. We Quite couldn't possible, then didn't, didn't see it that well on the screen here, unfortunately. Davis with the serve. Oh, just long there from Davis. Falco, the Italian, with a lovely burst of yes. Caught him with a shot to his body at the end line. Again, nothing divides the two. Davis ready in anticipation. Falco waits, serves into the net. It's as if 
waiting too long wasn't his ally there yeah sometimes too long a preparation uh, can work against you an experienced player like davis will not be thrown off and davis opens up two important point lead at the most crucial time and in this he gets set. to serve now on both of them 1080 leads there's that patience. There's the lob. Can he get there? Great lob from Falco. Too good. Even though Davis anticipated it, tried to throw his whole body force into that shot. He was a bit too short. But a strong serve is something he was talking about trying to bring back to the table, to the competition. Let's see if he can do it now on this second game ball. Yes, the benefit of the net call and yeah, lucky kills off. with the hesitated shot, <laughs> but well executed on uh, the weaker return. Game one goes to Robert Davis. Yeah, I think it might settle him down because he seems very agitated, doesn't he? Lots of comments back to his coach behind him and. Um, Probably hasn't played as well as he'd like, but he gets the win, and all you need to do is get through, don't you? Yeah, it's always frustrating when you're a player on the highest level for so long, then get injured and need to fight your way back. You know how good you can be if you get in the proper training and without the injuries, but then have to battle all these setbacks. He's still trying to do so after being away for so long from competition. Well, this could be crucial. If he advances in the Europeans, then he's got time to prepare for the all-important Paralympics next year in Paris. Most certainly, and winning that gold and the direct ticket to Paris would also put the pressure off performing well at uh, the competitions to come together the points really just concentrate on the most important Paralympics. And the players return to the table. See the interesting adjustments in the camera shot that uh, Davis is making to his chair, weighting it down. All to ensure it stays in the right position, in the wanted position for Davis. Yes. He's been secured to the floor. He's not going anywhere, Matteo. <laughs> no, he uh, ambles up to the table. No, it's another point where you want some movement, but not too much of it. So it doesn't bring you completely out of balance. And uh, yeah, another thing that each player has to find the best combination for themselves. Well, I've certainly learned a lot about wrapping bandages. Watch these guys do it between one hand and mouth and making sure their bats tightly gripped. It's all just about making the best use of what you've got. Yep. Fascinating how these guys can negotiate themselves around the table plus use the dexterity of the bat for angles lobs um, other abilities that they produce to make this game as exciting as it is players are ready and davis will serve and leads one set to nil Ooh. that was a hesitant reply from the British player. I'm a bit unsure in that crossover elbow area with which side of the racket to take the shot. 2-0. Uh, in fact, Davies was a slow starter in the first set, went down. He had to fight his way back from 4-2 down in the first set. And uh, he's 2 0 down already. <laughs> 3 0 down. 
Yeah, that uh, long elbow crossover position isn't working for him. You can see that he's still trying to find his, his so game there. Mm, Davis trailing 3-0, and but one set to live up. But 3-0, and it's a good advantage for the Italian. Well played, Rob Davis. Uh, that was definitely more to his liking, to how he wants to be playing. But first you have to get in, the, in that position, build your point up. Well played, Rob was the call in the crowd. And Davis fans himself with the bat because under the lights here at EIS Sheffield where outdoors it's nearly 25, 26 degrees as well. It's a warm place. There's the lob. <laughs> and the and competition's heating up. <laughs> Indeed. Certainly I'm heating up. I feel like I need a cold shower. So 1-4 to the Italian. 2-4. Beautiful down the line shot here. Surprised Falco completely. And this was exactly where we were in the first set. Can the Italian move up and increase his lead? Great serve. Oh. Yeah, but I feel like uh, Rob Davis uh, prefers this fast-paced game. So not necessarily the right decision by Falco. Well, Falco... See, let's see if he slows the game down, Matteo. Oh, great. Is that off the side mm. or was that off the end? No. I did see it off the side, but unless the players complained, the point will stand. I do think Davis is trying to call it out. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes it's, it's going back. Called out. I think the coach intervened. And, uh, so it remains 4-3 to Falco. The official had put up the, f the fifth point, so good intervention from the coach. If that's allowed. Oh, yeah, there was that Davis. spot again that Davies struggled so much throughout this game. 5-3. Long from Falco. Davies gives it right back. Yeah. Almost looked a little bit lazy with that shot, but it's probably the spin. Oh, mm, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> Caught completely off guard, Falco, on that serve. That's super. Not happy with himself at all. Ah, that one was out, and was Davis out. saw it as well. Falco stretching his body. Such an important start of each point, the serve. So the players are searching for those angles, corners, end lines. 5-4. Oh, 6-4-2. Yeah, Davis is struggling abnormally with his uh, elbow cross area here he didn't look fluid in the first game which he won and doesn't seem to be much more fluid in this one and there some basic mistakes and the Italian leads 7-4 good serve Ooh. Yeah, it was, but a uh, nice return as well, and Falco just didn't look ready for it. 7-5. Not the most fluid of games this time. Short rallies. No, we're mostly just on serve and receive, but... Um, Mistake there again. Unwanted gift. 
by Davis to Falco. Davis in danger of just uh, providing too many errors here to the Italian to be able to go on and win this second set. 8-6 to the Italian. <clears throat> There's the lob. Wow, did that land in, the return? No, no, no. No. Um, Davis was too short. But Just at least a slightly longer rally, some few more exchanges. Well earned point to the Italian. 9-6. This is a, a longer rally. Yeah, he tried it again with that positioning, but Davis was really good on that now. 9-7. Davis under some pressure. Oh, and another unforced error from Davis. Yeah, he's not in a position in this uh, game to do things like that. Three game points now to the Italian. And huh? the lob. Didn't need them. We yeah. didn't see that on the screen too well, but uh, the Italian finished the game with 11 to seven. Tying things back up now with one game to each. Well, Rob Davis wasn't fluid in that second set and uh, one set all and uh, Falco growing in confidence so coaches talking to their players now we'll be watching the replays on screen yeah a lot of errors uh, in this game as we'll probably see by Davis something he should seek to correct to have a fighting chance here uh, here was that out serve on replay yeah, a lot of audience a lot of GB spectators in the crowd here urging Rob Davis and uh, whilst it's one set all as it should be when their home hero is uh, battling it off in the semi-finals of European Championships. The players go through their rituals of preparing. Uh, the winner between another home interest, Thomas Matthews and the Hungarian Endre Mayor will be awaiting the winner of this one in the final that match taking place on table two right now and that's going currently into a fourth set six seven I was the just home crowd of course hoping for an all british final well as are these two players they talked about that a little bit before the competition what an ideal outcome that would be to battle it off for the gold amongst themselves well my all leads at the moment two sets to one and we're at one one here on table one so uh, the Brits are not there yet I'm afraid more work to be done So uh, Davis and Falco ready to do battle again. Davis stood like a statue at the moment, waiting for Falco. Serves straight into the net. I think Davis will happily take that as an opener. Yeah, he likes to take his time with the serve or getting prepared for the start of each point Falco, but it doesn't always uh, benefit him. 
There's the lob. This time, yeah, Matthews makes it. Right on it, Davis. Two zero for Davis. Starts well. Yeah, Falca continues to surge that crossover elbow area long on the table that worked so well in the previous game or didn't work well for Davis. Indeed. There's the lob from Davis and that's a well executed lob and he goes 3-1 up. That's just excellent. And if you've got eyes on the other game where Matthews is 10-9 down and if he loses that particular set he's out and it'd be Mayor who would go through so still work to do for the Brits Davis Lee's 3-2 here against the Italian Falco short serve out does Davis and Davis not in the flow but is that a legitimate serve brilliant down the line I found but I think the Italian had something to say about it it's been given at the moment so 4-3 to Davis Oh, Falco into the net. Yeah, twice served right on that difficult call area by Davis, but two points. And the benefit of the net there for the Davis. And 6-3 uh, he goes up. A bit of daylight for the first time. Usually started very slowly. But this has been a better start for the Brit. And never say no to some help from the net. Who goes long. Yeah, perhaps a little bit impatient trying to open that up. And we know that uh, the winner of this game will await Andre Mayor, who's just taken the British Thomas Matthews th two sets to three sets to one so Rob is the remaining British hope one all six five he leads so very tight there's the lob and it's long from Falco yeah, really, really precise serves now by Davis. Just there in the edge between the end line and the sidelines. Falco, slightly different serve. Ah, that was too nonchalant by Davis didn't quite commit to making that top spin shot Falco with an, another point 7-6 oh, I was going was that for edge? that down the line Didn't Just quite hit it. I thought it edged it then, but clearly not. And uh, from our angle, we c we couldn't quite discern the right call. So seven apiece. Falco rushed into that lob, wasn't it? it was on him very quickly. Yeah, it was a really fast serve, well positioned. And again, 
two clear shots for that down the line uh, Rob was liking and twice over the table and on the scoreboard for the Italian. Eight all now. Getting close. Oh, and yeah, long again. He was trying to do more across the table or middle of the table with this one after missing out on the two down the lines, but even that one wasn't quite right. Bad time for him to lose the lead in this game. That's a good shot. Yeah, does it with the back end at least. Levels it up at nine all. Feels like a lot of frustration from those forehands that he missed Davis put into his back end now. Can take home this third game if he uses his two serves right. Good yeah. pressure. Does good it pressure. now? Finally, his plan worked. Ten nine, he leads. Deep serve coming potentially. Oh, just, 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 just too long. Yeah, once again, not enough commitment in that. A bit of indecision, split of a second, and it was too much. It all started with a weaker serve already. Yes, it did, wasn't it? It wasn't a deep serve. Lob works beautifully. Beautifully returned here now. We'll be switching up the serves after every point with 10-10, but two-point advantage needed to win the game Davis will be mentally thinking do I go short or long what a great serve that was there's the lob no, and he's, he's done it he had to do a fast one again didn't look as convincing as a few times before but the lob does the trick afterwards and we're at 2-1 yeah it's uh, <coughs> it's not been convincing from Davis but Occasional moments of uh, some quality gives him that 2 1 advantage. And uh, can Falco answer in the third? 11 9, 7 11, 11 10. And you can, as you can imagine, as these games progress nearer and nearer to the conclusion, these games are going to be tighter, aren't they? Yes, of course, uh, the players are more on the same level, the stakes are higher. And uh, yes, Rob Davis, to be honest, doesn't look uh, entirely convincing. So giving Falco a chance here. Indeed. And uh, there won't be an all-British final, even if Davis gets through. As Matthews wasn't able to progress past the Hungarian. Uh, Mayor. But so far, at least Davis's dream of his fifth consecutive final and medal at singles European Championships stays alive. And there the remaining game so far of this period of play. Taking a bit longer to get ready with this classes one and two. And of course, when the match is so closely tied up, that extends it even longer. It does, it does. Davis. Strapping up. Both players strapping up. Trying to get comfortable. Yeah, that start in position, very important. It's the one you have the most control over, so important to take all the advantage 
from it. So two sets to one to Rob Davies from Great Britain. Trying to get into the final on his home patch because this is where British para table tennis is based here in Sheffield at the English Institute of Sport and they train here. Literally the home court advantage. Davis serves but he turns into the net. He struggled with those forehand attacks all through game three. Just doesn't look, a, he's not in rhythm. He doesn't feel rhythmical, but he's battling through. And he goes 2 0 down very quickly. This is how the other two first two sets started. Even on this level, days off, of course, happen. It's just not the European semi-finals when you want to have them. The best players, of course, always able to find a way to fight through them. Good point for Davis. Gets his first point. He's much better. He seems a much better player when he's playing aggressively. <coughs> Falco gets the top of the net there, I think. But he takes a 3-1 lead. Ah, that's the money shot. Yeah. Two of them. Nice big forehand wheeling down over the table. Yeah, first the brilliant back and down the line that forced a weaker return from the Italian. Yeah, I tried that one again with the serve, but not right on the ball with the second backhand. Perhaps expecting the return to go to the forehand side. Possibly so. 4-3. To Falco, there's the lob, and wasn't long enough. Short there from Davis. And, uh, and a spot of early trouble here. Five-two down, and I'm sure he doesn't necessarily want to go into that fifth set. Most well, certainly not, but the Italian will be has to win this game to stay in the match. Fight for his first major competition final. And an uncharacteristic mistake there. Yeah, David's making it a bit too easy right now for Falco. A 7-2 deficit, that's already becoming a big ask for Davis and uh, Falco building in confidence seven three Davis did well to stretch and find that one and get put Move short to short both uh, players bringing each other deep onto the surface of the table Davis with a really nice long shot then yeah towel break now Ooh. oh the timeout timeout face wash freshen up yeah, this has been going on for 37 minutes already. And decisive moments happening. 
The Italian just trying to make sure he wins this game and can battle it on again further in the fifth. Looks as if we started the next round of matches in the arena. Yes, on the other tables, but this one is far from over. But normally they wait for this to finish, but they're uh, allowing the other games to go on. So Davis sat here with his home crowd behind him. They desperately want a British player in the final and they've seen Tom Matthews just trip up. He will have a bronze, but he won't be in the final. Rob Davis leads 2-1, but 4-7 down. Already now with his serve, an important point to keep that advantage towards the end of this game. Here comes the serve. Oh, and Davis. And it brings the point. Just the way Falco wanted it. Eight four to the Italian, Davis with the serve. Yes, yeah, stuck to his fast-paced play and bringing him a point here. Eight five he trails. The Italian stretches. Davis prepares and serves. What a great shot from Falco. Yeah, back corner. and not even down the line, but uh, out edged. This is looking like the Italians set. Don't want to say too much too early, but they're makes it that mistake yeah. makes it 10-5 to the Italian and he looks as if he's going to level this game up finds going into Davis's the sore spot with his serve mm. well, an easy point back he's been bringing himself into trouble with this uh, backspin serve Didn't want to risk serving the same twice in a row, I suppose. Still four game points remaining. Oh, and Davis. Yeah. Just get that went long. Davis picks up the point. The Italian signals he's ready. And another point for Davis. Ten eight. Now surely now Falco will try again with that fast serve. I know I would. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> the Davis. surprise does the trick. Long backspin and game number four goes to Federico Falco. 11-8. And that's two games all. So two sets all. And the final set coming up. We'll just have a short break whilst they adjust and speak to their coaches.
So, the fifth and final set between Davis and Falco. Can the Brit, who arguably is the higher ranked, smashes his face with a bat, says, am I awake? Needs a good fifth set to advance to that final. And the Brits here in the crowd, desperate to see it. But Falco has proved a difficult customer. And has hung in and hung in. And it's more about, we've seen Rob Davis make quite a few errors rather than Falco making some great shots. But that's perhaps not being fair to Falco. He certainly, Davis, hasn't looked his best self, let's put it that way. Um, but um, it's up to Falco to capitalize on that, to put him under pressure and force him into those mistakes. Interestingly enough, Mayor has come down to watch this game. He's just below us, spectating. Mm, yeah, of course, he will be facing the winner between these two in the final. So surely he should be interested. Something wrong with that first serve, not tossed up high enough. <laughs> Davis gets first blood. Falco goes long. Davis feeling the heat, wafts his bat. I often wonder why they call it air con. It sounds like it's a, a trick rather than a condition. So maybe the wafting of the bat's working because he's got two points for Davis. 2-0 and he leads. Can he be consistent? Can he keep trading points? Yeah, consistency has been one of uh, a few problems Davis faced in this match and honestly throughout most of this competition. But he he's uh, building up his lead nicely now here in the fifth game. 3-0. and oh. Gets the net call. Clearly and saved the best for last. We'll just play more aggressively. That's more aggressive shots in these last in these last few minutes than we've yeah, seen all game. Yeah, and from the very start and with more conviction. 4-0 oh, he leads, Falco to serve. Good response and 5-0. Oh. Yeah, Falco's already used his time out, uh, probably regretting that decision right now. We'll go for the towels, towel break though in one more point, is that right? No, they're just uh, switching sides now. The first player, that would be Rob Davis, has won five points. And um, yes. we're just making sure everything's fair. Both competitors spend the same amount of time, more or less, on each side of the table. Well, 5-0 is probably the biggest lead we've had in this game so far by any player in any set. So... Yeah, and Falco surely happy to get at least this short break of pace for Davis. And uh, Davis just needs to trade points now, you know. And he could advance further. Falco having to wait. It's a mental thing here when you're in a position like this. Yeah, in uh, these uh, warm conditions, I wouldn't necessarily say they cool down, which could <laughs> be a problem. 
otherwise but uh, yeah I mean we see a lot of these breaks in classes one and two so it's not that the players would not be used to them uh, but uh, Davis was on a good track has to keep his pace up I would say he's played aggressively in this fifth and deciding set yeah and, and it's been bringing him points and uh, that's something that Falco would be looking to break good serve yeah but Davis is an experienced player really yeah. did bring up his his best serve now in this decisive set not allowing Falco to hope any further possibly 6-0 there's the lob it's a Hail Mary as we say yeah come short Davis will happily take it 7-0 is just nothing like the rest of the game <laughs> it's just incredible it's a, almost an implosion from Falco the Italian that's a good point gets once taps his head yeah that's that's what was missing for him those cross area positionings but Davis wasn't allowing him to to play like that in the previous points can't afford to do so now tries the lob but yeah that wasn't really there to hit that just wasn't um, build up properly to go for that shot and that's something Davis can allow himself to do now go Seven. for the easy points just work his way up again 7-2 goes to 8-2 mistake there from Falco and, and Davis is trading points and Falco is going to have to do something special to get these points back perhaps be uncharacteristic good strong serve good returns yes good point there for the Italian the service now will be with the Italian He needs to be perfect now to still get a chance to put enough pressure on Davis to maybe force him into wow, the mistakes, but he's angle. not having any of it. Wonderful and angle here. That was the big point. I not mean, even much uh, force movement in the arm, just the perfect angle, the perfect block. 9-3. Great serve again, good return, there's the lob, and killed by Falco. But good, a good passage of play. Yeah, very good serve, just not uh, done enough afterwards. That lob was just too long. Still 9-4, plenty of points to play with for Davis. Thinks about this service goes short and wide and that one's in and Falco fighting back now again Davis has brought himself into trouble with this serves it's like he decides in the last possible second what he'll serve and then uh, forgets what uh, response to expect so 9-5 but still no room for error for the Italian something a delay there yeah Falco's still taking his time is it that uh, there is people moving behind Falco <laughs> serves there's the lob and he's gone mm -hmm. into the net into the net this time it was it wasn't perfect it was doable for Falco 
He has a wry smile on his face. So these yeah, are match five points. Five match points now for Davis. There's that lob again. <laughs> that one was perfect and he finishes it off. Well, fighting his way into that so desired home final at the European Championships. Well Won't be facing his compatriot there, which was another secret desire for the British team, but um, another final and he will be seeing the Hungarian Andre Major in tomorrow at 1.15 on our table one again. Exactly. Well, thank you, Matteo. Davis progresses through, slaps the Italian on his back, says well done because that was a very close contest until the fifth and final set, which went to Davis. And we'll be back with you shortly after that long, long battle of nearly an hour between those two opponents.
Um, good afternoon and good evening actually sorry we're a little bit late to this game and uh, we have a matchup between Saint Pierre from France and Oluk from Turkey and it's already 4-0 with uh, Saint Pierre leading I'm joined by 
Gavin Maguire fr from the Irish team who's had a, a great day today in the arena. Yeah, big day for us. Uh, Yuri, Colin George in the men's class three won his quarter final. So into the medals now, which is a which is a massive result for, for him and for our team. So really, really pleased. So here in this uh, wheelchair class four, Saint Pierre leads. 4-2. Great play from Saint Pierre. Powerful. Yeah, this is a little bit of a difficult one for Aluk. So we're in the, the women's class four and five combined, and, and Saint Pierre is a class five, Aluk is a class four. So in terms of physicality, Saint Pierre would be the stronger. Which leaves obviously the Turkish had a slight disadvantage here. Uh, the Turk had a, a really tough win earlier this morning and booked her way into this semi-final. They have meet, met once before in uh, international competition and that went the way of St. Pierre 3-0. The number two in the world. Well, Oluk trailing 6-3 at the moment and uh, fierce and fast the rallies and Oluk is an expressive player saw her earlier in the day but 6-4 she trails concentration on the face of the Turk St. Pierre serves is long with a return 6-5 it's all levelling up Patient rally developing. Oh, and long from St. Pierre. Having led nice and early in this set. Six all now. Very good. If you feel, I feel if she can get into more of those rallies where it's a little bit about more short angles, she has some sort of chance. Whereas if she gets into the, the deeper, aggressive attacking play, St. Pierre is favoured all day long. Uh, St. Pierre trying to be aggressive on the response and hits long. And uh, if you think Oluk is uh, expressive, just watch her coach in the corner if you get a chance. Oluk with the, a return there just wide. But these guys are playing aggressively, 7 all. They've all got a medal at the moment, but it's to get to the final. Good shot there from Saint Pierre. Big crowd here at the EIS. Eight seven to Saint Pierre. She has serve. Bit of an unforced error there from the Turk. Oh, look. You're right there about St. Pierre. She's, uh, she's looking to attack on basically everything, isn't she? A uh, really, really strong player. You can see there again, even after one mistake on the attack, doesn't stop her. No. Keeps going, pressing forward, forward, forward. 10-8 she leads now this for the first set and she goes long 11-8 so first blood to Sam Pierre Alexandra Sam Pierre these games go quickly Firing away, so Saint Pierre tall in the seat, long reach, advantage there, Gavin. Yeah, definitely got the physical advantage here. There's no doubt about that. She's got the strength, she's got the the mobility factor over Oluk. 
But that doesn't rule a look out. Now she's got plenty about her game too. She can trade it with the best and she's got those short angles that we spoke about. Maybe if we can see a little bit more of that. 11-8 is not a bad score. She's certainly in the mix. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, she's a fire in her belly, I can tell you that, having watched her. Yeah, the Turkish team here are really renowned for fighting spirit and you know, giving it absolutely everything. So she won't go down without a fight. Back to the table. <coughs> the camera angle will give us a, a view of how Sam Pierre reacts. Heats up the bat. Then comes the ball. You see the. Ooh, that's power. Nice power right down the middle. And that's the problem here for a look. If she doesn't get perfection on her receives and perfection on each shot and gives any sort of chance to Saint Pierre, she's going to take it. Well, it could be a long night for the ball boys if Saint Pierre keeps hitting that ball like that because <laughs> that went a long way out of court. And they do like their balls back. Ooh, unforced error there from Saint Pierre. You see, it's a former player sat at the official scoring table, Dan Bullen. I'm not sure, Dan, I'd like to hear you say he's former. Former, but he's a player, sorry. Just in case he watches back, Yuri, you know. Yeah, he'll tell me. <laughs> oh, look, takes the lead, 2-1. A couple of unforced errors from Saint-Pierre. Perhaps there's something that Oluk can do to take her out of a rhythm. Here's that slow build-up. Ooh, Oluk had the opportunity there, didn't she? Yeah, chance to go 4-1 up. She'll be really disappointed with that. Saint Pierre is back in touch and distance. Ooh, what a shot. Hit that from behind her shoulder. Yeah, that just shows you the mobility in the, in the class five discipline you know really able to move the whole upper torso very quickly Oluk couldn't uh, respond time out from Turkey here might seem early to most but to be honest I think the Turkish coach knows that if it goes to 2-0 we're in we're not looking good she needs to try and capture this set Saint Pierre leads 4 3. There's Dan Bullen that we just spoke about now, putting the fancy timeout clock on the table. Yeah, he's uh, in, interesting in, in other dimensions of our work. He's actually run as a couple of table tennis competitions. So uh, him and his crew have come out. And uh, I think he was in the GB programme, but isn't currently in the GB programme. Players back on court. It's worth putting a camera on that coach of the Turk. He's, he's, he's worth every minute. Absolutely. Value for money. Service in. Long from St. Pierre, but she doesn't take any prisoners with any shot. Four apiece. Went with serve there. Oh look, missed it, misjudged. Saint Pierre, Ooh, what a fierce return! Anything mid depth on the table, she's there to punish. Again, powerful, powerful, but misses this time. The speed. It's amazing. Yeah. 
Oluk struggling there to get this back, but feel as if Oluk is just having to play right at the top of a game all the time. Not many encounters between these two before, you were saying? No, just one, and that went to the way of St. Pierre by three sets to zero, so that's all we have to go off in terms of form. And now St. Pierre leads 8-5. Crucial points coming up for Oluk. Gets one of them. Oluk with the serve. Unlucky there from Oluk. She did try and up her game. Nine six. Quick serve. And again, she just seems to be unable to hit the table when the pace in increases. Ten six. So Saint Pierre suddenly finds herself in a comfortable position to take the second set on serve. Long, long with the backhand. A slower rally here. And Oluk couldn't respond. Loses 11-7. Two sets to love and kind of the writing's on the wall for Oluk. She's going to have to do an amazing job to get back into this one. Yeah, extremely difficult to ask, really. Especially given the fact that St. Pierre is the class five and Oluk is the class four. We're in a mixed class here at the moment. So extremely difficult to ask to try and take on the class five world champion St. Pierre. And beyond European, is it mixed as well, four and five at the Worlds? Does it mix? It really depends on the number of competitors, Yuri. That's the, if, it, if it's a low enough number, then they'll combine the classes. Ah, uh, right. That's a tough call for the class fours then, isn't it? That's a tough one. Yeah, absolutely. There must be um, tremendous pressure to move up class threes into four. <laughs> Bring a bit more depth in, yeah. Well, at the end of the day, though, we've got the bronze medal in the bag for Oluk, so it's yes. not really a bad result in terms of what she's done here at this tournament. Ready to start set two. Or, sorry, set three, I should say. Third set underway. Oluk goes long. Good response from Oluk there. Showing her aggressive side. One apiece. <laughs> Unlucky there for Oluk. She responded well with the let call and she didn't get the benefit of the let when she hit back and it just went out for her. So 2-1. Great play from Saint Pierre. That was a real nice mixing up of long going short. Oh, she's got it all in the locker, really, doesn't she?
Pollock keeps hanging in there, 3-2, down. <laughs> Tremendous power from Saint pierre you just have to sit back and enjoy the talent of this woman. Speed and great coordination, she hits the ball so well timing players feeling the heat there fanning themselves there Gavin yeah it's very hot out in the field of play here we obviously don't have air conditioning because it affects the flight of the ball so no air conditioning in the hall really bright hot lights shining down so it's uh, quite, can get sweat, quite sweaty out there I suppose a, a warm room affects the ball as well does that make it move quicker yeah the warm if, it, if it's warm the ball is traveling faster and Oluk. that means it's a more physical game then too Oluk there with a good backhand down the line gets a response 5-3 she trails goes long there couldn't handle the spin 6-3 Oh, takes one on the head. Six four. Well recovered from Oluk. It's like a great rally, and Oluk finishes it with a some real flair. The only problem for Oluk really is she's got to sustain that level every single point. That's a uh, that's a great comment. That's how tough it is. Well, where else would you do that? But here at the European Championships against a better opponent. On paper. I feel as if Oluk is just beginning to get to grips with the pace of St. Pierre, but having lost the first two sets. And that's often the case, doesn't it? You, you start to understand how your better opponent plays. But there again, difficult to be consistent at this level for her. But it's seven all. <laughs> Saint Pierre rushed that. Yeah, just maybe seeing the finish line, wanting to get it over with as quick as possible. A bit more work to do. Cagey stuff. Oh, the Turk almost had the win there, but hit the net, went out of bounds and eight apiece. So, really crucial points here for the Turk as she serves. She wants to stay in the game. She takes one of them. Great shot there. Absolutely nothing to lose at this stage. She's got to go for it, and that she did. And she gets two of those points. One. Just a really quick serve and follow up a backhand attack. Just kind of surprised Saint Pierre there a little bit. Saint Pierre. Takes a time. Oh, and they'll look straight into the net. Yeah, you can see the spin there. That's one of those that we could actually really visibly see the spin on the ball when it touched Oluk's racket. Shooting down towards the net with so much backspin on the ball. Oh, and Sam Pierre just shows why she is such a good player. Yeah, and on the contrary there, she served with topspin. So when Olo put her racket to the ball, 
jumping up into the air, presenting a chance for St. Pierre to play strong. Short serve. Wow, oh, what a response from St. Pierre. Suddenly she was in trouble, and now she's 11 10 up. And the match point is hers. Yes. What a backhand to finish. Wow. What a Saint Pierre played tremendously well in those four points which she needed to win and just stepped up a gear. Courageous attempt from the Turk, who's the class four player, but the class five player, as you said, Gavin, just too much. Yeah, just a little bit too much on the day, too strong physically, too much ability to get to the balls. And, um, no, no real shame there for a look. She did herself proud at this tournament, so not to worry. She has her bronze medal, and she'll live to fight another day. As Saint Pierre goes on to play the final tomorrow. Well, Saint Pierre into the final, and uh, three and zero relatively comfortably, and we'll be back with uh, one more game here from the Institute of Sport in Sheffield, and that'll be in about twenty minutes or so.
So welcome back to table one here at the English Institute of Sport in Sheffield for the European Para Table Tennis Championships. And uh, my name is Yuri Madison. I'm joined by Gavin Maguire from Team Ireland. And we have the final game of the day on this particular table, table one, which is wheelchair class four quarterfinals between Oshturk and Mihailik. Mihailik and... Uh, we have a, a t an interesting matchup here, um, Gavin. They've played each other quite a few times, and uh, the Slovakian and the Turk, not much between them. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting game here. Mihalek and Ozturk have met each other 16 times. Nine of those 16 going to Ozturk and seven going to Mihalek. But interesting, they haven't actually played each other since 2015, according to the stats. So. And we're underway. First point to Mihaly because he just gets the edge of the table. Powerful from Mihaly and two and zero oh very quickly. Mihaly again seems to be. Early on, overpowering Osturk. Yeah, strong start, big backhands. And Osturk into the net, hasn't settled in very well here. Yeah, not the start he would have hoped for, for sure, but just needs to gain composure. Wow, and Mikhailik showing real resolve in these early stages with some tremendous shots. Yeah, he's got an incredible, incredibly strong backhand. So Osturk is going to want to try to avoid that, get him a little bit deeper into the forehand side. Played that short there and Osturk couldn't get there. A little bit frustrated, takes a break. Six points already on the board for the Slovakian who is uh, dominating this competition. And he goes seven and oh. Another rocket backhand. Wasn't expecting quite this uh, one-sided event. But at the moment, Osterk has yet to show up. And he goes along with that one. He was saying he has a brother who plays in the Turkish team as well, isn't he? Yeah, Abdullah's got Ali Osterk in the, in the national team with him. So it's a family affair. And Osterk misses the side of the table there. As we're coming up to the dreaded donut, Yuri. <laughs> Not seen it happen yet, but 9 and 0. Oh. We will have we one point for the donut or not. Oh, wow. Always feeling for the player. And he gets the donut. Little backhand down the line there. Ozturk resigned himself to the loss. And can't really believe that, can you, Yuri? No, it just just surprises me. Maybe he's just not feeling well, but doesn't say in the record books that Mikhailik is going to dominate Osturk so much. No, not at all, and, and not even in the rankings. Mihalik is, is a lot lower ranked at the moment than, than Osturk, so uh, I would be surprised if we don't see a bit of a wake-up call here and, and Osturk start to play more like himself, unless there's any issues we don't know about. Well, it's surprising to see something so one-sided. And a big roars in the stadium is for the Great Britain victory in Class 6. Out on Table 6. Martin Perry doing the business over there. Beating the Swede. 6-11 in the fifth set. So he'll be advancing to 
the semi-finals and here we're about the quarter-finals so Peter Mihailik made short shrift of Osterk 11-0 winning that and that's the first 11-0 I've seen here in three days so Mihailik back on the table first point to Osterk you can see there Osterk directly first ball out to the forehand a little bit towards the elbow of Mihailik so he's not sure if he can take the backhand and uh, picks up a second point maybe we'll have two donuts we couldn't could we I doubt it still a hotbed of action here at 7.30 8 o'clock at the EIS in Sheffield tables flying round playing tremendous atmosphere nice big audience about a thousand people watching Osterk 3-1 up doesn't look anything like that first set which was 11 and 0 it's just surprising Osterk a little bit frustrated still signs that he's not too comfortable making a couple of unforced errors but he's taking away the shot that Mihailik had that backhand can fly back at him yeah everything now is more towards the forehand in the middle of the table or at a, or at a minimum short in the backhand where he's not able to play that really expansive top spin shot 4-2 up to Osterk Well, he's recovered well there, Osterk. Two expansive shots from the Slovakian, but Osterk able to respond and defend and open up a three-point lead. Nice move there from Osterk, and seems to prevent his, the Slovakian from having those aggressive shots yeah just closing the game a little bit more now more backspin on the ball not allowing it into an easy area where it's within his backhand range Oof. That's because that's what happens yep he likes that shot still 6-3 An attempted lob and Osterk oh, felt. A huge mistake. Oh, that was a gimme, wasn't it? Literally a gimme. Oh, Oof. great counter top spin wow. from the there probably not the best receive he's ever played a little bit high give Osterk a chance but came straight back at him Osterk was dominating and now pulled back to 6-5 just one point in his favour oh, well played cross court yeah the way Michalek's playing now where he's so free so comfortable in those top spins I think Osterk's got to really start to work with the angles like we just saw there wide forehand short the backhand we saw earlier on in the set that's where the points are to be won right now while he's well Michalek's feeling good 7-5 Osterk receives and you can see there again started by the short ball yeah
Oster coming to terms now with uh, the Slovakian. Gets the look of the net there and goes 10-5. And remarkably, having lost 11-0 in the first set, could well take the next one. You must have got some good words of advice from your favourite coach, Yuri. Indeed. And he's got the second set, 11-5. You can almost put the bat in the coach's hands and he play from there. Well, that was bizarre. Here Having he watched is the on first screen set. now. Yeah. Our friend, the most animated coach in the hall. Really energetic, showing, you can tell... He wears his heart on his sleeve. He wants everything but the players to win. That's that's all he's thinking about. Well, <laughs> he's a he's a theatrical character. So, Osterk had worked out what the strengths of Mihailik were and uh, taking those strengths away, he's found himself back in the game one set all and the Slovakian might need to adjust how he plays they haven't met for eight years were you saying seven yeah, or eight years looks like 2015 is the last time they played at an international competition Heating up the bat, or is that just cleaning the bat, what they keep doing? Generally, a little bit of cleaning the bat, but also because we're in such a hot, hot environment here, a little bit of condensation builds up and you need to keep the racket dry so that they can get maximum grip on the ball. They highlight with the first point. Testing each other, corners. Oh. Mihalik tried to get that backhand going again. <coughs> it's certainly his shot, isn't it? He just, if you give him the chance. Yeah, very much so. If it's in his range, deep on the table, there's nobody better in that position. But again, Osterk is just playing a little bit shorter than he was in the first set. And what was the exchange there, the hand? Looks like there might have been a net service. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I didn't see that one myself. No. Oh, good shot from Oshturk. And the coach is out of the chair. He's happy with that one. <laughs> Seeing his player starting to attack and win the points himself. I wonder what would happen in the gold medal match. I'm not sure. Gentle here, gentle. Like chess at the moment. Great wrist there from Oster. Just flicked it over and flicked over the table. Unexpected. Michalek didn't really see that coming. Oster 3 1. Again. Gentle and Oster suddenly found another. Another level, first first game was, well, frankly, atrocious, but this looks like more of a match now. Mihailik unable to respond, he's getting completely subsumed. Yeah, really good from Osterk, to be honest. Tactically, he's just taken that Mihailik backhand completely out of the game. I was concerned he was going to recover from that 11-0 drumming <laughs> um. so 5-1 Osterk leads in the second Mihailik needs to find some other game that he, to play yeah got a point there yeah he certainly got the forehand top spin it's not backhand is not his only weapon however it certainly would be the strongest of the two
a nice serve as well. Loaded with top spin. Oshchirk not able to control it. That short ball proving Osterk's favourite ball here. It's it's really being good to him now. Yep. Give credit to Osterk. He's finding the ability to just to place that one gently into the corner over the net. Difficult shot to make. There's the opportunity. <laughs> I don't love the coach. Yeah, as animated as he is, he obviously knows what he's talking about because from 11-0 losing, Osterk has really turned this around and he's a bit of a tactical masterclass, to be honest. 7-3. Whoa, and uh, Mikhailik put some leather behind that one and went into court 10. And it feels like Mikhailik's coming apart. He's gone 8-3 down. And this Turkish official coach gets that he's up again what a man <laughs> we're gonna have to have a special camera just for him yeah absolutely just measure his blood pressure pre and post game will be good you can see him in the corner of our shot anyway some of the hand gestures and Emotion great that he's showing. Oster, great one. So Oster, 10 3. And Mihailik has just disappeared. Oh, mistake there. I believe the coach said, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Tur chill, Turkish man, team chill. do it e do easy. <laughs> Mikhailik there with favourite top spin. Yeah, he's just got to be careful not to let Mikhailik get any uh, get any rhythm here because we saw what he can do with a bit of rhythm. Great shot. Will he go short or long with the serve? Goes long. And Mikhailik goes long too. So 11-6. And from what looked like an impossible position, Osterk takes two sets and gets 2-1 up, having trailed 1-0 with that 11-0 drubbing. Oh. Great recovery, really. And... It's Mikhailik who's struggling to get into the game. Yeah, massive contrast to what we saw in the first set, but again, it is worth mentioning the, the obvious tactical changes from Osterk there, closing the game down a lot more. Backspin on the ball into deep areas of Mikhailik's middle, where he's not sure whether he should take forehand or backhand, leading to a lot of errors and opportunities for Osterk to capitalise, not to mention short and wide in backhand another one of the tactics you've seen deployed just to perfection really over the last two sets and all credit goes to our friend in the corner Yuri absolutely he's playing this game he was in the corner for the other Turkish match earlier on today and he's just such an animated character here we go Mikhailik needs to get his game back together. Patience here. Great shot from Oshturk. Catches the end of the table. Yeah, just glanced the net on the way over. That's why he's saying sorry to Mikhailik.
Oh, Michalek. He was hitting those before and. Uh, Timeout direct here, 2 0. Yeah. Just not happy at all, not comfortable. You can see the body language there. It's remarkable though, I mean, he was such in the groove. 11 and 0, you just think, oh, this guy's going to absolutely kill his opponent. But, like you say, Osterk took that opportunity away from him and he seems to have shriveled up. Yeah, coach just trying to give him some words of advice, some words of motivation probably more than anything, just to try and pick him up, get him going again. And we do know if he finds a way to capture a bit of rhythm, bring that backhand back into play, he's dynamite. Well, the Slovakian, a good time out though, 2-0, didn't let it run too far. 2-0. We're all set. The coach is poised, hands on his knees, leaning forward. And Osterk's also got the service. Here he comes. And Mihalik gets that little rub of the green. He needs a few more of those. Oof. Was that off the side or over the end? No. no I think it was all good. But all you can see there, Mihalik really trying to go for the backhand obviously that's what the coach said you've got to you've got to give it a go on the backhand side there you go again wow and Osterk is meeting him every inch of the way superb exchanges between the two he's in the groove now isn't he this is just a totally different player to what we saw in the first set incredible And every piece of luck is going his way now. Yeah. Even when Michalek makes a really strong attack. It almost feels as if it's it's gone away from the Slovakian. I think Osterk's got the momentum. Yep, everything is going Osterk's way and nothing is going the Slovakian's way. He's gone 6-1 down now. Oh, nod, nods that one in. But that's a point to the Slovakian. Yeah, nice little change there. Short ball out to the wide backhand. Just caught Osterk off guard slightly. Don't think that would work every time, but a nice little variation. Trying to go for the angles. Ooh. Tried to adjust his chair there to, to hit the winner, but 7-2. Great return from Oster. Just blocked it, didn't it? It was a blocked return. Yeah, blocked return, and our friend is on his feet again. I think he's sucking this ball over the net. Yeah, Mikhailik's imploding. He's 9-2 down. And uh, it's just remarkable. Yeah, complete implosion here, really, in the last set. Yeah. It's horrible to watch in that sense, but... And that's the shot he was killing in the first set and now he's 10-2 and it's a forlorn position these are match points there's the lob didn't work Osterk with a bag full of match points another point back Slovakian playing with freedom there. And our friend just on his feet here. Final words of encouragement. Get this <laughs> job done. <laughs> Get this job done. I'd hate to see what happens when he loses. <laughs> just. Oh, Osterk long again. 
probably a, potentially a timeout, but I think maybe one one point one more point before we see that. Yeah. He's just saying calm down is the coach. happy he knows he's given away a few points it's um, it's interesting this is uh, developing into a mind game here 6 10 no stranger to winning points in a row anyway but Michalik can't afford a mistake and another miss so will there be a timeout yeah, he's called are. it he's called a timeout and uh, 7-10 a little bit of doubt it's just what do you think our friend is saying but he's just reassuring him isn't he he said you got this you got this look just cool relax as, cool, cool customer cool as coach yeah. he's really looking calm and collected and I think he's just saying you know you've got the points just keep playing keep playing but uh, Mihaly He's got not room for errors. He's, he's, every shot has got to be on point. Yeah, I think on the Mihailik end, really, his only option here is just to try and keep the ball on the table. You're not, and I know that sounds simple. However, no mistakes. No, no mistakes. Not even trying to go for a big attack. If it presents itself, just ball on the table. Make Osterk win this match. Good shout there from Gavin Maguire. Long rally, evolving. Oh, yeah, and Osterk went for the kill. Just ball on the table, Peter. This man is not happy. He's become uncomfortable out here now, all of a sudden. So you do your job, don't make a mistake, and let him do that. Well, Osterk still has these two match points, and he just could play kind of safety. I'd imagine there's a long top spin serve coming now. Oh, that's the one. It went long and he took the victory. It was just long. 11 8. And remarkably, having got one down, Osterk takes three consecutive sets. Takes the win, goes to the semi-final, and our Turkish coach feels comfortable. Um, a good win for us, Turk. Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait to see more of the coach tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's all she says here, folks, uh, from the EIS in Sheffield, Table 1. And we'll be seeing you in the morning for a 10 a.m. start. And we hope you've enjoyed Table Tennis here from... EIS Sheffield at the European Para Championships. See you tomorrow.